Hi everybody and welcome to this Studio One video. My name is Lukas Ruschitzka. In this new Studio One update, there are as always a couple of bigger new features that have already been discussed in detail. So in this video, I'd like to show you some new features and improvements that nobody talked about because some of them aren't mentioned in the release notes or anywhere else. So if you enjoy the smaller workflow improvements and features, this video is for you. If you like to see more hidden features and tips on Studio One, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell. I really appreciate the support and I hope you like the content I do on this channel. Let's start with track presets. Track presets are a great feature, perhaps my favorite feature in version 6. However, there was one thing that we could not do in previous versions and that was to select more than one track preset at the same time and drag all of them into the song. For example, if I have a strings folder that contains single instruments like violins, violas, celli and basses, or it could also be woodwinds, in previous versions we couldn't select and drag them into the song to load all these instruments in one go. And that's now possible. That's just a small improvement, but I personally really wanted that because it allows me to have a small template of default instruments and then pick all the single instruments I want, select them with the shift key, they could also be from different folders, and then just add them to my song. Again, small change, but for me it's really one of the best improvements in this new version. Performance improvements. Let's again talk about song templates. If you're having a large number of tracks because you want to have all instruments available, then you might love the performance improvements in version 6.6. .6. Let's jump back to version 6.5 with this song that has over a thousand tracks and you see that zooming was a bit laggy with this large number of tracks and also things like opening the mixer or showing or hiding tracks took quite a bit of time. This has been massively improved in version 6.6 .6 so that zooming is now a lot smoother as you can see here. And the same for showing and hiding tracks. On my system this is about 4 or 5 times faster than before and this was on an older system so on current machines the difference is probably even bigger. This might not be an issue for people who only have 20 or 30 tracks in the song but with these huge templates it can really improve workflow a lot. So if you're using an orchestral template Try it and let me know in the comments if you like the results. The next feature is for the macro ninjas among us. Imagine you want to create a macro that takes your selected tracks or channels, adds a new bus for these channels and adds some specific insert effects to the bus. This can be incredibly useful because you can create macros with your favorite effects or effect chains for example, if you always use a specific EQ preset for your vocals or guitars or even a whole chain of effects that you always use for your songs. Then you are able to run these macros from a keyboard shortcut or from a button here in the toolbar. What has changed in version 6.6 .6 is that these two commands have been improved so that they work more reliably now and regardless of if you have selected tracks or channels or if the mixer is open or closed. So let me show you two really cool macros that are now possible. To create a macro, open the macro toolbar, right click and add a new button. Then right click on this button and choose assign and new macro. Search for the command add bus for selected channels and double click it to add it to our macro. Then rename channel and here you can choose a name you want, for example, vocal bus. Then set color of selected channels. And now choose the color you want. Now search for add insert to selected channels. And again double click and here you can choose an effect and even a preset for the effect. For example, let's choose Pro EQ and the vocal preset. So what this macro does is it takes your selected channels, adds a bus for them, 
renames the bus, so you don't need to do this every time again. It gives the bus a specific color and it adds effects to the bus. And of course, you can also add the effect command multiple times to add as many effects as you want. So let's try it out. Let's close this window, perhaps uh, rename the button. And now we can select a couple of tracks and click the button for the macro. And that's so cool. There's the new bus with our custom name, custom colors and custom effects. And this way you can basically create your own bus templates. That has been possible for a while now, but now it's even more reliable and it just works. Now let's change our macro a little bit. Instead of the add command for selected channels command, let's add the pack folder command. This command takes our selected tracks and moves them into a new folder. And here we can set a name too. And now let's add the command add bus for folder track. This will create a new bus and link this bus to our folder so everything in this folder will be routed to that bus. And now we don't need to rename channel anymore because we already have a name for the folder. And now let's try this out again for our tracks. Select some of them and press our button. And we get a new folder and at the same time we get a new bus for the folder again with custom color and our effects chain. Really, really handy small trick to add buses with effects. Again, if you enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more Studio One workflow tricks. New commands for live performance. Go to section, select setlist item, select player and select patch. These new commands allow us to do things that were not possible in all previous Studio One versions. For example, you can now recall certain sections in your song via macros and trigger these macros via keyboard shortcuts or from your MIDI controller. Why is this useful? Because with this command, you can create a macro that jumps to a certain section of your song. For example, the intro or the first verse or the first chorus or the bridge. And this works on both song page and show page. But I think it's primarily useful for the show page where you have your different song sections and you can now switch to a specific section in your song. For example, if you decide that you want to end your current song, then you can just trigger the macro for the outro and this jumps to the section with the name outro. This was not possible before and it's really a game changer for live performance. And the same is now possible for setlist items like songs in your show and players to select certain players. Or here's my favorite, select patch. Because that allows to recall certain sounds, certain instrument presets with your MIDI controller. So if you're playing on your MIDI keyboard and your MIDI keyboard has pads or buttons, then you can assign specific patches to each pad. So you can basically put all your favorite sounds on these pads or buttons, which I think is something you really want to do if you're playing a live show or you're just jamming along with one of your tracks and your favorite virtual instruments. I'm going to show this in detail soon in another show page video as part of my show page series. So if that's something you're interested in, watch out for this tutorial. For now, that's all I have to show. I hope you've liked the tips in this video and I hope you enjoyed these features and workflow improvements in version 6.6. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.